Hi guys, and welcome back to another Dots Race video, and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 21. We're back here on board the Husqvarna for the Moto3 World Championship, right here in round four for Portimao. So starting in pole position was Grant, Binder, McPhee on the front, Toba, Alcoba, and Masia, Foggia, Suzuki, Artigas, Yamanaka, Rodrigo, Garcia, Acosta, Sasaki, Antonelli, Mino, Guevara, and Fernati, Tatai, Onju, Nepa, Salach, Koffler, and Dupasquier, Farid Izdihar, Fernandez, Cooney, Fallon, and Ricardo Rossi at the back of the grid. We now look to the lights for round four of this World Championship, and away we go! Brilliant start from Grant, as always, so I'm going to utilise the power setting two in this video today. Power setting three seems to be way too powerful, so keep an eye out on the power. If I, if I abuse that into power setting three, then I deserve a slap on the wrist. But for the time being, power setting two, because we already got a track limits warning. What a start! We do not fancy another long lap penalty. My voice is already cracking already. There's all oh, contact made there from... Was that Alcoba? Massey has gone down! Jammer Massey is down! Oh my goodness. What a horrific start to this Grand Prix. Long lap penalty. Track limit warning for me. Alcoba bumps me. And even Jammer Massey has gone down. Well, Moto3 is true to form yet again. Carnage into turn two. Absolute chaos already has ensued in this Grand Prix. Goodness me, what on earth could you do in that one? I think that was actually turn three, I might be wrong. But Jeremy Alcoba, massive props for him to being aggressive and getting through. Of course, at the same time, he did push me very, very wide. Jamma Masia suffered from that one, but ultimately Alcoba is now into the podium positions for the first time this season. But of course, he has a very dominant World Championship leader chasing him down. Oh, I thought about a lunge up on the inside of turn 11, but thankfully we both didn't collide. If we were going to make that move, we were going to collide it, and we probably would have both ended into the gravel up on the inside of Alcoba. Now that is a beautiful move. Put that in the Dot Race archives, please. Brilliant stuff. Absolutely gorgeous as Jeremy Alcoba will fight back. Brilliant. But we let him run wide and then we get up inside again. <laughs> oh, done him. Brilliant stuff. Brilliant stuff from Grant. Alcoba, Grant battling it out here in Portimao. But of course, by messing around effectively, they just lost one second to the boys in light blue. And of course, that is Darren Binder and John McPhee. We are still in power setting two. Probably going to lose uh, on the straight to Jeremy Alcoba. He's about four tenths of a second behind, so I think we got a much better drive. Don't think Alcoba will be close enough. Now going into turn one for the Prime Area. On the right-hand side of the tyre for quite a while. Going into turn two, and then we'll sit the bike upwards and brakes gently into turn three for Largos. Of course, I mentioned in the braking guide video, keep the tyres parallel when braking into turn three, and you should be absolutely fine and dandy. Pushing a little bit too hard there as we try to get out of the rear and really push the rear tyre of this Husqvarna. Now going into the very, very difficult turn five for the Tour VIP. It's a difficult corner to get right, but once you've nailed it, you can gain so much time. Grant is pursuing the Petronas boys. Where is he going to try and get closer and closer? If we can get into the slipstream by the end of this lap, we'll definitely be in chance for a charge here. Definitely have a chance of a bite of a little nibble to John McPhee. Darren Bender and McPhee working extremely well in tandem right now. This is what teamwork's all about. No messing around, both working together to ensure that they keep the top two spots. Now onto the right-hand side for Portimao for turn 10 and into turn 11. Getting closer and closer to the rumble strip there, so we then flick it to the left-hand side for turn 12. A tad too close to the rumble strip there, because if you get onto that part, you can end up losing the front because of the wave of nature of the bike will sort of shift. And also onto that rumble strip there, goodness me, do be careful. I'm just pushing so hard to chase down John McPhee and Darren Bender. Because of course, as made mention to already, I'm still in power setting two. The bike is heavier because of more fuel, and of course we aren't pushing so much fuel into this machine right now, so it is difficult. I'm trying to cut as much corners, it's not the actual corner, but I'm trying to cut the apex as much as possible to try and cut down on any time loss. But we are into the slipstream just about of John McPhee. Roughly around five tenths of a second should give us enough slipstream, but they're also in each other's slipstream, so we didn't manage to chase them down on that lap there. John McPhee getting ever so close to his teammate as Grant set the fast lap of the Grand Prix with 150.405 as we run it a little bit wide again. Very smart decision just to be gentle and just accept the penalty or just to accept that we've succumbed to the corner and then just to take it easy, you don't get the penalty. So bear that in mind if you haven't done that already. If you do go wide, just slow it down a little bit, remove any advantage you've just been given and then you won't get a penalty for it or at least we didn't in this instant. 
So, quick recap of the top eight as things stand. Binder, McPhee, Grant, Alcoba, Artiga, Suzuki, Foggia and Gabriel Rodrigo are your top eight as it stands. Jammer Massey getting taken out into turn three. Not sure if he decides to get back onto the top of the motorcycle. Hopefully he did. But at the same time, that is massive championship points lost again for Jammer Masia. He didn't do two grand in Austin, and he's not doing two grand here today. Now onto the left-hand side for the Craig Jones corner. We were pretty good there in qualifying. Here as well, we gained a lot of time on these two as well. Br breaking a little bit earlier, breaking a little bit later, doing everything we can to try and figure out how we can cut down some time to chase down the Petronas boys, because they are doing so good. They're absolutely brilliant in this crack so far. It's a good job to them, playing it well, playing it smart. John McPhee, he is still hanging in there. He's, he's not going for a lunge just yet. I don't think he needs to as well. Of course, when the pit board passes by, he'll, he'll just be saying, Petronas boys, good job, thumbs up. I'm impressed. <laughs> now into the gallop, we might be close enough here for a lunge. Not for a lunge, sorry, but for the slipstream to eventually result into a cheeky lunge. Into the slipstream we go. John McPhee looks like he's going to be lining up Darren Binder here. Potentially he wants to lead this Grand Prix, of course. The two men are abreast. John McPhee is technically into the lead now, but will Binder be the last of the late breakers? Not quite. John McPhee around the outside. Brilliant stuff from the British rider. Excellent stuff for the Scotsman. Getting closer and closer. We are now. A little bit of a, a battle is what we need to keep us close to these guys. This has been a different style of Motor 3 race currently as things stand. We are sort of working our way forward we're being part of the chess match who are we going to show our pieces to first when are we going to do it and how is it going to transpire going into the tour vip yet again for the fourth time of asking getting closer and closer to the patronus boys darren binder he is on our hit list we're coming for you he obviously hates us after the incident in austin but we couldn't do anything about it is it going to go to fisticuffs here is it all going to blow up who knows? We're going to get closer and closer to Darren Binder. Can we get him onto the turn of Portimao? That would be a beautiful overtake. That is the real man's man's overtake. It's the Chad's overtake. Could we get up at the inside of Darren Binder here? Getting closer and closer to the rear of the Patronus boys. Not quite. Darren Binder defending well. He does not fancy me getting in front of him. Of course, this will go to blows. But can we get up the inside of Darren Binder? That is a beautiful move. Oh, sliding. Oh, oh my God. Goodness me, I felt the worst then. Oh, did I ever. When we got onto the rumble strip, he slid a little bit, got closer and closer to Binder. Binder wasn't giving up. He didn't know we were sliding. But thankfully, we were able just to stop this Husqvarna just before contact was made. Goodness me, my hands were well over above my eyes there. But we do get closer and closer to Darren Binder. This is not over yet, ladies and gentlemen. What a rival we've got here between these two gentlemen. Dive bomb Darren and the one they call Dr. Ace is pursuing him. Oh my goodness. What a rivalry. I really can't wait to see how this one unfolds. When a beautiful. Oh, is this a move up the inside into the prime area? You're close enough. Brilliant. Oh, contact made it again. Every overtake these boys have, it always results into a bit of a fisticuffs, a fairing battering, or just some sort of paint changing. Goodness me. Onto the left hand side now for turn four. We do find the dispatch of Darren Binder. He won't give up, though. You know he'll stay with us somewhere. Now we need to chase down the fellow Brit, the Scotsman ahead of us. Into turn five. We are closing in ever so much. Darren Binder, he's going to be disappointed by that one. He lost a lot of time by giving up that position. He is behind by around six tenths of a second, so it's not over. As long as he stays with us, he'll be able to get the slipstream going into turn one in just the end of this lap, of course. Now onto the right-hand side of the tyre for Samsung, getting closer and closer to John McPhee. McPhee doesn't know that we we're already ahead of Darren Binder, his teammate. He knows we're roughly around there, because of course he must have seen it on his pit board. But this time, we're getting closer and closer. And now onto the right-hand side. Ooh, a little bit wide there. That is my mistake. That is probably our first mistake of this Grand Prix. But actually, we've still got a decent line going into to follow Gerald McPhee. We're literally covering him neck and neck for every single bit of slipstream possible. As we get on the left-hand side for turn 13. Do avoid the rumble strip if we can. Of course, we've seen that happen on the previous lap. Almost carnage. Now onto the right-hand side for Sargress for turn 14. Going to be closing in on John McPhee. Hopefully, we'll have enough for the slipstream to get ahead of him. It's four tenths of a second, so potentially so. That'll be enough to get through. It certainly will as we get a massive amount of speed coming out of that corner there. Look at the right-hand side of the tyre, though. That right-hand side of the tyre, both and the front and medium, 
is, oh, I couldn't even speak, both front and rear is getting an absolute hounding, two men abreast going across the line now, Grant sets the fast up of the race to 149.926, but we get closer and closer to turn one, oh, John McPhee, last of the late breakers, breaking that ever so little bit more than we are getting closer and closer turn two turn three do we go for a lawn drop on the inside that's a beautiful maneuver don't touch my rear tire no john mcphee he didn't he did <laughs> oh my god don't touch the rear tire oh that is a cheeky move from john mcphee that's dirty that is and grant is might be out of this grand prix can he get the husqvarna started Oh, just about. He's back on it, but goodness me. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to the bike retrieval feature. But we are now down by 21 seconds. Goodness me. Have I been cheated there? Let me know in the comment section down below. Should John McPhee get a bit of a telling off for that one? It did look like he turned in on me. I guess I was going a little bit too wide. But I swear to God he turned in on me. I actually went a little bit wider because I felt like he was going to touch my rear tyre. And lo and behold, what did he do? Thanks a lot, John. So we are going to go up to power setting three to see if I can sort of claw back some points. But oh my goodness. John McPhee, you have just ruined a magnificent battle there between two brilliant British riders. So now on to the right-hand side for Port and Mao. Disappointment. Disappointment. The, I, I've seen the clipboards get launched in the uh, Husqvarna garage. Disconsolate faces. Disappointment on the faces of the crew managers. Oh my goodness, they are miffed. I can't imagine what Grant's feeling like under that helmet right now. He must be livid. He's eager to get back at John McPhee. But whilst all that occurred, Darren Binder took the lead and Xavi Artigas even managed to get ahead of John McPhee. So this race is far from over. I do apologise for screaming in both of your ears, but uh, <laughs> needs must in this situation. Power setting three for the very first time. We'll actually see when our true race pace is utilizing power setting three so we managed to close in a second as we utilize a bit of slipstream from ricardo rossi 17 seconds back to the leaders oh it's going to be a tough one it's going to be so tough we lost 20 seconds there goodness me that is a joke that is ridiculous john mcphee oh just you wait to harass young man we'll have our revenge he'll have his comeuppance Goodness me. Ah, I'm, I'm lost for words on that one. John McPhee, you have cheated us of a magnificent battle here in Portimao. But now we've got to do something we haven't done all season, and that is have our backs up against the wall, face adversity, spit in its face, and chase down and get it back into the top ten. That's the goal here. We know what we're up against. We know what we've done. We might lose the championship lead, but hey-ho, who cares? We want revenge. We want to get past as many riders as possible. We have plenty of laps of fuel left to do it in. There's not many laps in total. Because, of course, you guys wanted less of a race. <laughs> you guys wanted a little bit of a shorter race. So we dropped it down to 50% compared to the 75% that I was running. And, uh, yes, now I've got even less time to chase these guys down. Which is good because, of course, the pressure is now well and truly on. As we now chase down our teammate, Adrian Fernandez. As uh, Yuki Kuni has a good old look behind his shoulder thinking, Oh my god, is that the championship leader? What the hell's he doing down there? Surely he would have seen me on the gravel, picking up my bike up and spitting gravel out my teeth. Goodness me. We'll chase him down in a moment's time. I, I swear to god, I should call this video goodness me. That's all I've said throughout this one. I'm absolutely flabbergasted from that move from John McPhee. As we now go up to the in... Well, sorry, excuse me, get into the slipstream of Adrian Fernandez. We've got Yuki Kuni in there, Carlos Tatai. Look at the speed coming up between two riders. Beautifully done. That is gorgeous. That was actually Jason Dupasquier. Who is now going to turn one. Arid Farid Izdihar. I tell you now, I'll, I'll let you into a little secret. Every time I pronounce this guy's name on the starting grid, I butcher it. And I have to do a retake. And I've just butchered it yet again. Goodness me, Farid Izdihar. <laughs> Goodness me. As we are getting the, really close to the Team Asia Honda. And around the outside we go. Now going into the Tour VIP. Utilising Power Setting 3, as you can see, we are really, really, really quick. We are much quicker than we were. So by utilising Power Setting 3, with a little bit of slipstream here and there, we did set the fast up of the race with the 148.270. And no, I didn't just miss that uh, track limits warning. I don't know why we got that. It didn't seem fair to me that we got a track limits warning. But at the same time, it's two of five. I'm not going to be too worried about it yet. 
Let's just focus on the race. We need to chase these guys down. We need to take more points. Just got to do what we can do on the right-hand side for Portimao. Salach is ahead of us. Onchu is there. Binder still leading this Grand Prix. It looks like he's ahead by a little bit. Xavi Artigas and John McPhee are behind, but not by enough probably to challenge Binder just yet. As we now get on the left-hand side for turn 13. We are chucking in some pretty fast and consistent paces here right now. I do feel like I'm quite focused to chase these guys down. Of course, this is brand new to us. We haven't done this yet this season. Starting from pole position pretty much every race. I think, yes, I think it is back to back to back to back pole positions. As we now go on the right hand side for turn 15. Going to be getting onto the rear of Philip Salach in a moment's time. Fingers crossed we can. But the rear tyre is, uh, is looking a bit worse for wear, let me be honest with you. Whether this will last the entire duration of this Grand Prix, I'm not too sure. But we get closer and closer to Philip Salach. Breaking into turn one very gently, saving as much front uh, tyre life as we can. Going a little bit wide there, please don't go off the track again. Got stuck in the rumble strip a little bit there. But look at the amount of riders ahead of us. We could very well get ourselves back into the points, potentially a top 10 finish. That is the goal here. We only have two and a half laps remaining. Into the rear of Philip Salach, the uh, v &E Sniper's Honda. We'll be able to break around the outside, potentially going into turn five. That is exactly what we'll do. Around the outside, beautifully done. Chasing down Dennis on Chu on the Red Bull KTM Tech 3. Now we're getting closer and closer to Onchu. Do we go around the outside of him as well? Oh, that'll be two for one if we do. We'll let him run it wide a little bit. We got a bit out of shape there, but now up in the inside for the Samsung corner. There is Carlos Tata. I made mention of him earlier, but of course I corrected myself. It was Jason Dupasquier. And now Carlos Tata, the number 99, will be chased down as well. It's only a matter of time. Disappointing race for Andrea Mino, though, isn't it? He's down in 15th. What on earth happened to him? Did he get caught up in the Jam and Master incident? Who knows? Well, goodness me, that is not where Andrea Mino should be. He should be well and truly up there with the boys. As we get closer and closer to Carlos Tatai and Andrea Mino now. Carlos Tatai, not quite the success in Moto3 I thought he'd have. Obviously, very, very good in Red Bull Rookies Cup. And of course, when I say very, very good, I mean he was the 2019 Red Bull Rookies Cup. So I expect him to do a lot better in Moto3. Of course, it's still early yet. This is only like his third season. But oh, we get. <laughs> We are so close to the rear of the 2019 Red Bull Rookies Cup winner. And we get ever so closer now to Andrea Mino as well. Look how much speed we gain upon him just by using Power Setting 3. Extra slipstream as we now go up at the inside to be breaking into Turn 1 into 15th position. So that is in the points already. So if you're not sure how the points system work, it's 1 point for 15th, 2 for 60, uh, 2 for 14th rather. You, you get more points for going further up the grid, not further down. So we will see how things go. Of course, we want two more points if they're on offer. Romano Fanati is there. I'm sure, I don't know. I'm sure he'll be all right with his teammate. He is kind of a team guy, but at the same time, he's a bit of a hothead. So I don't know what mood he's in today. Fingers crossed he's not going to get in my way. In fact, is that Jamma Masia ahead of Pedro Acosta? So Jamma Masia managed to remount. Brilliant stuff for him. That is a good job from the Spaniard. I generally thought he was out of the points today. So he's still going to get a little bit of a chunk of points. Not enough. To call himself a still a world champion contender, of course. But Romano, Fanati, Acosta. There's someone else in there as well. I just can't quite see from where I am. It might be a Yumi Sasaki, a cat, or it might be Sergio Garcia. I just can't see from where I am. We get onto the right hand side of the tyres. We get closer and closer to a lunge on Romano Fanati. Goodness me, I think it's Nico Antonelli, actually. Is he now on the rear of the Husqvarna? I think it's the first time this season I've actually seen another Husqvarna. Not counting Adrian Fernandez early on as we dive over the inside of not one, but two! Brilliant move. I've done an Acosta on Acosta. <laughs> of course, he had a beautiful lunge up on the inside of Dennis Foggia in the race just two weeks ago. So that is how that's done. Thanks for showing me the way, Pedro Acosta. And now I'll take those extra points from you. As also, Romano Fanati took advantage of that move and went through as well. So hopefully Fanati can get back onto the rear of Grant. Use my, utilize my slipstream, chase down Antonelli and co. And then we can get some more points added to the list. John McPhee and Binder are battling it out into the lead right now. Tatsuki Suzuki has made his presence known on the podium so far. Fingers crossed for him he can stay because Suzuki-san is yet to have a podium this season. As we now get up on the right side for turn one. Beautiful move on the inside of Antonelli. Don't touch my rear tyre, please. Getting closer and closer as we now get closer to Jamma Masia as well. Jamma Masia on the final lap. I'd love to beat Jamma Masia at the very least. Jamma Masia, after seeing me crash, he's probably thought, yes! And then he's seen uh, right onto the rear tyre of him again. 
So goodness me, into turn five, around the outside perhaps? Oh, I'll take that very much. Oh, I'll take it. Thank you very, very much, Shalomasia. Now Kaitotobe is ahead of us. I don't think we'll be able to catch turn. I don't know. I hope we can catch Kaito, but it's going to be a difficult one. He's... If we catch him up, we'll basically catch up uh, Guevara as well. So we'll just use everything we've got. We've still got a bit of power. Three. Oh, that wheelie might have killed it. That wheelie might have ruined it for us there. Goodness me, what a race, though. If we finish in 11th place, I'm going to be a bit disappointed. I really want to get in the top 10 at least, because that is my team goal. So as far as they're concerned, this will be a disappointment. And of course, it is a disappointment anyway, because we should have been on the podium at the very least. We're not even going to get that. We're not even going to get the top five. Robbed we were of John McPhee. John, I'm disappointed you're going to win in this one, to be honest with you. John McPhee, Suzuki and Bender. That's probably going to be a podium. They're probably going to be crossing the line any moment now. We are six seconds behind. So considering we were down by a hefty chunk, I don't think that's too bad, to be fair. Now into the slipstream of Kaito Toba. We're probably not going to be close enough, even with power sending three. We're not. Goodness me, we didn't manage it, but what a race, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, 11th place really doesn't show our potential, but it is what it is. So the results are in. McPhee wins from Suzuki and Binder. Rodrigo Artigas Alcoba, Foggia Garcia, Guevara, Kaito Toba, and Grant finishes in 11th place. Not a great result for the championship leader. So we now take a look at the most important point, and that is the Riders' Championship. We lead by five points ahead of Gabriel Rodrigo, and John McPhee gets himself up in the podium positions by 13 points behind. The team championship has as follows. Of course, the Petronas Sprinter Racing did a magnificent job today, and they have taken the top spot and lead by a whopping 19 points. So guys, as always, thank you very much for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, and subscribe if you did. Hit the notification bell to be alerted to every single Dot Trace upload. And upon that note, guys, thanks for watching, and ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Trace video.